Hi everyone, this is Jarrett from uh, minijunkie.com uh, basically just making my first video <laughs> with my new vloggy HD camcorder. I thought it'd be cool to start doing some tutorial videos. Um, I do get questions on my site quite a bit and uh, you know about how I how I paint certain figures, what kind of airbrush I use, all that kind of stuff. And I thought for this video you know what we could do is just go through the kind of equipment and the kind of setup that I'm using and some recommendations I would make for someone who wants to get into using an airbrush for this hobby. So the first thing you can see that I have that I think is somewhat important for if you want to use an airbrush for the hobby is a dedicated area to do it. So you can see the mess that I make here. Uh, bottles scattered everywhere. I tend to get super lazy and just when I'm starting a new color I'll literally just spray it on this like shelf liner paper I stuck to my desk. Um, the desk I basically bought for this purpose so I don't really care if it gets kind of dirty. And uh, you know, I'm actually sitting, you can't see it and I won't bother to show you right now, but I'm sitting in an unfinished bathroom in my basement. So <clears throat> the reason for that is A, I, I can make a mess of it and B, uh, it's got a built-in fan so I can, I can turn the fan on and kind of ventilate um, while I'm spraying. Although I do spray primarily, um, well, pretty much exclusively acrylics. So, um, you know, non-toxic, but still you don't want to be breathing too much of that in. So I do, I do ventilate quite a bit. Um, so in terms of equipment, I'll show you what I use. So the, for the airbrush itself that I use, and hopefully you can see this, I use the uh, Iwata HP BCS. Um, it's kind of a, I, I think it's kind of a beginner's airbrush. It's kind of mid-range. Um, but why I like it is it's got, if I'm not mistaken, a, a 0.5 millimeter um, nozzle because I think with acrylics you tend to get a lot of clogging. So a larger nozzle size is actually can be beneficial because I, I used to struggle big time with um, with clogging and it was driving me nuts and, and it took me quite a while to find the right acrylic paint consistency to, to avoid that. Um, the other thing, so that's that's the airbrush I use. The other, the other reason I use this one as opposed to Gravity Feed, um, I find it's faster for me to, to quickly switch between um, siphon-fed colors and siphon-fed cleaner and then get right back to painting. I don't like, you know, filling some paint in a cup and then having to, like, clean that out. And I, I never really got good good results or good flow from using the uh, a Gravity Feed, so I stopped, I stopped trying. Um, I also use uh, a coiled hose, I don't know if you can see it there, a coiled hose for my compressor and I bought this water trap, um, I believe it's also from Iwata. I found that <clears throat> at some point what was happening was the longer, I'd, I'd go for a long time and it would build up water in the line and then I was my airbrush was starting to spit water on the miniature which makes a mess and is basically, it just doesn't work when you're when that starts to happen. So this this item basically traps the moisture as a little release you can push to spit out the water if it, if, uh, if it getting some build up and it really helps the paint that's coming out to be much much cleaner and not not have water and not start to splatter and spider web on your surface so I use that I use I think you can see this in the video I use this kind of like airbrush cleaning station so you basically get, and, and really all it is is a container with a filter built into it and you just put your airbrush in like this and spray cleaner into the bottle directly to avoid getting a the cleaner fumes all over the place. In terms of um, air, which is one of the most important things for an airbrush to function well, um, let's try and lift this up so you can see it. It's kind of covered in dirt and crap. I use this um, Iwata Studio Series Sprint Jet. Um, why I use it, I don't know. I, I bought it as an upgrade from trying to use canned air and all that kind of junk, which I highly discourage you from doing. Um, if you're going to take the plunge into using an airbrush, you're going to just, I think, accept the fact that it's a bit of an expensive thing to get into. You need an initial outlay of uh, a bit of an investment, but then with the right equipment, your results will be so much better, so so much quicker that it's just not worth screwing around with like things like compressed air and stuff like that. So the other thing that's good about this is it's got this, uh, it's really dusty, it's got a pressure gauge so you can adjust how hard or softly uh, the paint is being shot through the through the hose, and uh, it was pretty economical. I think it was, I don't know, 250 Canadian, maybe even less. I can't recall. And I've had it for 
probably close to two years and it's still going strong. And it doesn't need any maintenance as far as I can tell or no. Uh, it doesn't need oiling or anything like that. It just keeps keeps going. So uh, what else do I use? Um, yeah, so in terms of siphon feed, what I do is I keep my colors sort of pre-mixed in bottles like this. This is like, they're like two ounce bottles you can get at Michael's Crafts in Canada. And I'm not sure where else you would get those like in the States and stuff. But that's what I, I keep all my paints in that. And I'll show you the whole rack of them I have at, at, towards the end of the video. Um, so that what I do is I say, okay, I'm going to be painting, you know, whatever color and I, I take out some blues and I, that way I can just quickly pop siphon feeds onto them as I go and then switch back onto the caps so that I don't have to, um, you know, mix it up in, in the cup or any of that kind of stuff. And then I just keep these extra, um, siphon caps, which I've ordered online, I think from Airbrush Supply or some, there was some place in, in California. I just keep a whole cup of those and I when they're done I throw them in my sink I actually have a sink installed in here and I throw them in a little container of uh, simple green and it actually cleans them out quite nicely and then they're ready to rock for, for the next colors when I start another session the next day uh, cleaner I use this Medea Medea airbrush cleaner which I think is basically a spin-off of Iwata's brand uh, because it's cheap it's about I think fifth, no, 10 bucks a bottle or something, but it lasts forever. Like I've had this bottle for months and months and haven't used it up. Um, one of the most important things you need, and I've found all different versions of this stuff, but basically you need, uh, I'll try and get in the light here, Liquitex airbrush medium or any kind of airbrush medium. Basically there's all different brands of it and stuff. I don't recommend reducing your, your acrylics with water to spray, but you do need to reduce them with something. The reason I don't like water is it, um, you know, it doesn't bind the pigments properly. It kind of, um, I find I get really splattery results or it tends to, it tends to spider web on the surface very quickly. So, and I get really weird flow consistency, consistency from water. Whereas with the, I get really noticeably improved um, flow from adding airbrush medium. And what I'll do if I'm going to prepare a bottle is I'll put basically 50% of the color. In this case, it was uh, scorpion scorpion and green and then 50 and then basically double that amount so well, what am I trying to say so one to one a one to one mix of the color and the airbrush medium to get a nice flow and you get different colors having different properties just like you do when you're painting on your palette so for example white white is a color that tends to dry very very quickly as you know and it can clog your brush very quickly and go on kind of um, it can go on kind of powdery and not very nice, um, not create a nice smooth surface for you. So maybe that's when you're mixing up the white, you might have to add more airbrush medium. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I've created all kinds of different mixes, including mixing different brands of paint. And, uh, you know, the results just depend on, usually on the mix of air medium uh, that you're adding and how much of it. And sometimes if you keep these balls for a long time, you're going to need to either shake them up or stir them up or... Um, top them up with some additional airbrush medium because it tends to, I think, vet, sort of slowly dry out or um, definitely the, the pigments tend to accumulate at the bottom so you need to be aware of that. I, I airbrush all different kinds of colors. I use P3, I use Vallejo, including game color, model color. I use GW's paints. I use, it's, it's, it's crazy. Tamiya, in my opinion, and I think I've seen other people say this, like, um, Matthew Fontana, if I'm not mistaken, is a fan of Tamiya. Um, it airbrushes, in my opinion, better than any other color or any other brand of paint, but it's a pain in the butt to store because if I leave a bottle of it sitting for more than, you know, a week or two, it seems like the, the pigment settles at the bottom in a really, really thick, goopy mess that it's very difficult to bring back um, despite lots of, um, you know, stirring and shaking. So I find that um, the life shelf life of this stuff is poor but the color and consistency and the flow is so good like even if i mess up the the mix of airbrush medium it seems like it still comes out just really smooth and here's an example of you know how i use the airbrush when i'm painting minis here's an example of like a necron annihilation barge this is tamiya desert yellow goes on nice and smooth same thing with like, let's say a lich guard, Let's see if I can get it close, I'm kind of looking at it, the camera from a funny angle here. But basically I cover 
anywhere that I want the color to be and I make a mess because the fact is what you do is you, with with airbrushing you know I've seen people say oh you can't you can't do um, you know 25 millimeter models you have to only do vehicles but for example here's a Necron Lord that I've been working on use the airbrush um, for its strength so its strengths are quickly and smoothly color covering large surfaces but that you know that can also include batch painting so you know I can rip through the base bone color on a bunch of lich guards in, in like you know 10 minutes as opposed to hand painting it for 30 or 40 minutes and the, the trick is to work backwards from most mess to least and that's true of painting as well when it comes to things like dry brushing things like that you tend to do your dry brushing first or any of the more messy kind of painting and then you clean that up so in this case for example no, I don't want the whole thing to be yellow. Uh, you know, it's going to end up being bone and green and, and bolt gun and all kinds of stuff. But what I do is I do the biggest color everywhere. And then what I do is I add, like by hand, I'll brush in bolt gun where it belongs. Um, actually, first I'll airbrush a highlight of, let's say, what I've been using is um, P3 Menoth base as a highlight. I'll do that. And then I'll, I'll add the bolt gun and then I'll clean everything up and I'll give it some washes. And then so you use the airbrush for what it's good for and then you you know you need to know when it's time to switch over to a normal brush and do your detail work or do things that the brush isn't that suitable for um, so that's that what else should I tell you about um, you're gonna need some uh, airbrush lubricant basically it's like some it's, it's a kind of oil and what you're gonna be doing is taking apart your your airbrush which is pretty easy with like let's say with the awata the, the back just unscrews the needle comes out. You want to lubricate the needle so that it's, you get a nice smooth action, back, you know, back and forth when you're when you're spraying. Um, oh, I should have mentioned um, this is a dual action. So basically, what happens is you push down to get air, and you pull back to get paint. And you can do any sort of combination of that. Usually, what you do is you start blowing the air first, and then you slowly ease back to get your paint to come out. That's, I think, superior to something like, for example, the single action item, such as a GW, the GW spray gun, I believe, is all or nothing. So you pull the trigger and it just blasts, right? And you're not going to get any kind of fine control at all. So, for example, by using dual action, I can actually spray, you know, if I'm going to highlight this, I can spray just very lightly the bone cut, you know, the, the Menoth base just on the edges, kind of build up highlights that way. And the dual action gives you the kind of control you're going to need to do that. Um, I'm all over the place here, so, uh, so my apologies, I don't make a whole lot of videos, so um, what else do I want to tell you about? You can airbrush metallics, it doesn't, as far as I can see or have ever experienced, it doesn't screw up your airbrush. I use, bolt gun actually sprays beautifully. Um, I keep, you know, I keep some bolt gun in a bottle like this and I, I, I use it quite a bit. I don't recommend um, trying to use washes, I don't think it's... It, Airbrushing isn't the right way to apply a wash. At the end of the day, washes should be brushed on with a with a you know a thick bodied um, brush. And in fact, the GW wash brush is excellent um, because you want it to be sort of slop. I hate to use the word, but you want to flood the area. You want to you want to um, control where you're putting it. You want it to actually be built up in the crevices more than on the surfaces. With the airbrush, you just you just don't really have that kind of control, especially given how thin you know something like a GW wash is it's just kind of going to blast all over and I don't and I think you're going to lose that pooling effect so I personally do not try to airbrush um, washes onto onto models I also don't airbrush um, varnish or sealant um, I use testers dull coat basically um, I, don't, I don't actually have a reason why but I've never bothered to try and airbrush the washes um, you're going to want these you can get the set of these which are like little airbrush let's see if you can see this here little airbrush brushes it's a little kind of on a ring a key ring all different sizes so you can get into your your siphon hoses and like the siphon caps and clean out the inside of the straw you're just gonna put that in there when you're cleaning it and just you know clean it out get all the paint out of there um, and also you use that for getting some of the paint out of like the inlet area of the airbrush and stuff like that so these are really really handy to have and they're you know you only buy them once and they've got them forever <coughs> uh, so, oh gloves 
Okay, so I, I buy boxes of these at like Canadian Tire or wherever, you you know, a hardware store. They're just vinyl gloves, disposable. Um, you can get them latex free. They've got like a powder on them and so on the inside to get them off easy. But basically, you're holding, you know, you're going to be holding a little model like this and you're going to end up with airbrush paint all over your fingernails and all over your fingers and hands and I mean it comes off but it's a pain in the butt so you might as well just use a, use these and then I mean these are good for priming as well which um, I'll finish off by saying that I don't use the airbrush to prime you could there's no reason you can't but I use um, basically black black primer spray cans from uh, GW and I think I've covered everything so cleaning you know, the type of brush, um, the type of air is very important. The, the, to me, the, the key things to being successful with airbrushing is uh, air and, and using the right medium and the right paint consistency. I think even with a cheaper brush, you'll get great results as long as you've got your paints reduced or thinned properly with the right kind of stuff and not too much and not too little. And you've got really a consistent, strong, dry air source. Um, the reason that the cans are not good is that the emptier or the longer you're using them or the more they cool off, I think they blow um, less constant air. So you get really weird fluctuations in the paint as it's coming out and it just makes for a pain in the butt. Um, the last thing to be aware of is that acrylics will dry faster than like some of the solvent based airbrush paints. So what happens is you're going to get, and I didn't know this for the longest time, it was such a pain. You get what's called tip dry or something like that. And it just basically means the tip of your needle is building up dried airbrush paint as you're spraying and what's happening is it starts to either blow off big chunks onto your, onto your model or it starts to block the nozzle and the paint's not flowing. The solution is I keep the cover off the tip of the airbrush because it does come with a guard. I keep that off and I just basically, while I'm painting, I'll, every once in a while I'll just pick the, pull the paint right off the tip so that it's nice and clean and then keep spraying. Uh, that's about it. Um, thanks for your patience with my extremely amateur video skills, but um, hopefully this has been somewhat informative. Um, feel free to email me, jarrettl at shaw.ca if you want to ask me questions or uh, stop by the website. Um, World Wide Web, minijunkie.com if you want to ask more questions or see different kinds of videos. Thanks.